The two most important days in your life are the day you're born and the day you find out why. So Mark Twain famously said that. And the first part of that is absolutely important. It's quite useful that we're born. And some people consider it a jackpot when you consider scientists estimate a chance about 1 in 400 trillion that any of us are born. But we don't have much say in that day. I don't remember sitting down with my folks and discussing when and where I might be born. But I want to focus on the second part of this quote. The day you find out why. Because that is something that you do have say over. That is about finding your purpose. Because you see, I'm like Tom Hanks. I'm like Lady Gaga. I'm like Serena Williams. I could go on naming famous person after famous person. And they and I have something in common. At some point, we have all felt fake. We have been waiting for someone to realise that actually, we're not as good at our job as you think we are. We have put time, we have put energy, particularly energy in terms of stress, into either physically or metaphorically looking over our shoulders and going, when are they going to find me out? But it's not just famous people. I mean, I included my name in the list, so it can't be. A recent study that was done by Claire Hoser in 2019, in the workplace, up to 49% of men and up to 52% of women in the workplace say that they regularly or even on a daily basis, suffer from these negative thought patterns. So if these are so widespread, what are they? It has lots of different names, but the one that's most often used is imposter syndrome. And the effects of imposter syndrome can be extremely wide and extremely deep. They can cause addictions, they can cause serious mental health, including severe depression. They cause a lack of engagement in the workplace, a lack of productivity. They even cause, at the subconscious level, self-sabotage. Imagine how destructive that is for the individual, the person who is no longer going forward for things that they really want to do because they talk themselves out of it and how destructive it is for the group or the organisation that they're working with, working for. So if these negative thought patterns, if imposter syndrome is so widespread and the impact is so deep, what can we do about it? So I explored this and the first place I went to was, think about someone who doesn't have imposter syndrome. And so I went and was chatting with my brother. We're farmer's sons. He's very practical. He's always loved farming. From the moment he could walk, he was out chasing tractors, learning how to do stuff. By the age of 13, he could drive a tractor and trailer better than any adult farmer. And yes, it was legal in those days at 13. <laughs> he just loved it. He absorbed it. It wasn't learning, it wasn't work. He hated school. He wanted to be out on the farm. He can fix any machine, set up any machine, yeah, he can break a few, but he always knows how to mend them and put them back together. He didn't have to learn that. It's through just loving what he was doing. It's what he wanted to do. You might even say it's what he needed to do. He always knew what he wanted to do. I was different. So I wasn't the practical type, quite to the same extent. Don't get me wrong, I can change a wheel of a car if I get a puncture. I can even back a trailer sometimes. But I'm not in the same league as him for that stuff. 
me growing up on a farm gave me a, uh, a joy for everything organism-wise. I wanted to know how organisms worked. So I did a degree in microbiology and genetics, I stayed on and did a PhD in molecular biology. I was fascinated at the DNA level, how things work. So you might think, well that's it then, a career in a white coat, not for me. Actually, working at the bench in a lab, I found too slow paced for me. Doing the same experiment for the third or fourth time just to prove the first one was right, that was all a bit tedious for me. So, I did what anybody does when you finish one part of life, move on to the next, dust off your CV, get the letters going, and apply for some jobs. And I pretty quickly got involved in marketing. I was offered a marketing position. That sounds good. It's fast-paced, there's lots to do, it's never-ending, and I can use my technical knowledge because I'll be marketing in the biotech sector. So I did that for a few years, a couple of different companies, working my way up the ladder quite quickly, until myself and a friend, perhaps a little bit arrogantly, thought we can do this better. And we went and we set up our own biological reagent company. And we did that for a few years. And for those of you that work in your own company, you know you don't work nine to five when it's your own company. Actually, it's much more probably working 24-7. But you love it because it's your own organisation, it's your own business. As part of the experience, breakfast, lunch and a glass of Prosecco were included for those who attended. This new and engaging presentation already in the works, we hope TEDx events return in the new future. This is Julia Finnegan reporting for the University of Buckingham.